Hello everyone, so in this video, I want to give you guys a comprehensive comparison between two um, very popular vintage film cameras, that is the Manonta X570 or slash 500 in other markets outside of the United States and Olympus OM-1. So um, both of those cameras are fully manual focus and uh, of course they all use 35 millimeter films um, but there are some key differences which might make one camera work uh, works better for you than the other so let's start with the comparison so the um, let's start with the om1 so this camera again it started the manual focus SLR revolution with the most compact size SLR ever made. And it's still, to this day, the most compact uh, 35 millimeter film SLR manual focus that you can get. Okay, you cannot find anything smaller than this. And it's beautifully designed. It came out in the early um, 70s. And this is the OM-1 MD version, which actually incorporated some terminals on the bottom. So you can use some newer um, <clears throat> film advancing motors um, that uh, Olympus introduced uh, later in the design of the OM-1. Um, the advantage of the OM-1 is that it's fully mechanical, okay, fully mechanical. Um, so less chance of getting faulty as long as it works, uh, it will work and it will work for a long time. The only time that it needs battery is uh, if you want to use the optional building meter option, so there's a little battery cap over here, you just unscrew it and put in a uh, 1.5 volt uh, cell battery and it should uh, enable the metering in the camera. And that metering is controlled by this little power button over here. So this power button on and off, it only controls the meter. Everything else is fully mechanical, okay? Setting up the shutter speed, setting up the aperture, focus, everything is fully manual. Um, the other advantage is since it's fully manual, the bulb mode in this camera does not require a battery to operate. So this camera is going to be great for someone that needs um, to do long time exposures, especially night photography, astrophotography, uh, anything involves long time exposure. This camera is going to do it much, much better than the uh, Manonta X570. Another plus is that this camera when it came out it actually designed it's actually got a building mirror lockup function so i'm going to show you guys i'm going to remove the lens the mirror lockup is great for um, macro photography or scientific photography where you need to actually mount the camera onto a microscope or if you have a very long macro lens that the mirror lockup when you press the shutter, it's going to reduce the amount of vibration caused by the mirror. So what you're going to do is this little button over here. All you have to do, just flip it and the mirror comes up and you can just advance and cock your shutter normally and fire the shutter. And once you finish with the mirror lockup, just flip this mirror. It comes down very easy, very nice, very well implemented. And it's not found on the, the Manonta um, X570. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that's another advantage of the OM-1. And uh, lastly, the advantage is that the OM-1 is a full metal build camera body. Um, top plate is full metal, bottom plate is full metal. And the different version, the black version or black colored version, uh, once you wear down the, the coating, you can see that um, the plate is actually made of brass. So. It's much, much more um, durable, if you ask me, uh, when it comes down to durability of those vintage cameras. Um, so that's definitely one plus as well, okay? So talked about the advantage of the OM-1. Uh, now let's talk about the negatives, okay? So uh, this camera, first and foremost, the viewfinder is extremely basic. There is no information for the shutter speed. There's no information for the aperture setting that you set. So every time you have to compose like so, and then you want to set your aperture and shutter speed. If you not, if you haven't used the camera as much, you have to look down at the top of the camera right here. So um, 
where all the information is displayed right here. And because of the, um, the design of the shutter speed, which is also incorporated in the front, so you can look, you know, both at the shutter speed and at the aperture. However, you just, there is no information in the viewfinder for you to do that. Um, the only information in the viewfinder is a very basic light meter, okay? It basically just had a needle that goes up and down between a little slot. So um, you know it's correctly exposed when you adjust your aperture and shutter speed to fit into that slot flat, then it's correctly exposed. So very basic um, design in the viewfinder, okay? So um, also this camera, when it came out in the 70s, the uh, Olympus used a foam uh, on the top of the prism. That foam is very prone to uh, deteriorating and damaging the prism, which leaves a very nasty looking um, like a defect at the bottom of the viewfinder. So most of those cameras, as you're gonna see, um, for sale used on eBay or anywhere in other marketplace, uh, they probably gonna have this problem because you know after 40 years, that foam is destined to deteriorate. Um, there is a fix for it, so, but, it requires some DIY by opening and removing the top plate and replacing that foam with a, um, or removing that foam and replace the prism. Um, for people who are handy and uh, kind of enjoys exploring your options, you can do that and replace the prism very easily or even fix a prism uh, to reduce the effect of that defect. Um, but for people who, you know, don't want to do DIY, um, you're gonna most likely encounter that problem with a used OM-1. So that's definitely something to be careful of. Um, and uh, another design problem is that the hot shoe, the uh, Olympus designed it to be removable. And that hot shoe is actually using a very fragile plastic that's extremely easy to get damaged. So in year 2022, um, it's highly unlikely they're gonna find a hot shoe that's in good working condition. Most of those hot shoes are already cracked and damaged because of the plastic they used in the 70s. So that's another downside. But again, for me, it's not a problem because um, I don't really use flash for film photography. Uh, and But for people who actually still want to experience with flash photography on an old film camera, uh, you're gonna have to be careful uh, because of that issue with damaged hot shoes. Now, um, another downside is the light sensor used in this camera, or the light meter. It's 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 a light it's a light sensor called the CDS type light meter. Uh, this kind of light meter, uh, I think, it was popular in the 60s, going forward into 70s. Um, however, this light meter is kind of an old design. It's less sensitive. Uh, to the uh, to the to the to the light changes and it's slightly less accurate It still works. It's just slower and it doesn't measure the full range of the light of the lighting conditions <clears throat> So that's another downside um, So it's basic the light meter is very basic and uh, uh, Another another downside and again, it's mostly like a quirk is that this camera does not have a off button so it's again fully mechanical this on off button on the top, it only controls the light meter. So um, if you have the shutter cocked and you cannot turn the camera off, if you actually press the shutter, it's gonna take a picture, okay? So uh, very easy to happen, actually. I wasted probably at least every roll of film, I waste at least two to three frames because I actually pressed the shutter button. Um, and that's just something to take into consideration. If you don't like wasting your films, uh, you might want to avoid this camera because there's no off button on here. Um, and uh, again, the last thing I want to say will be probably a downside is since it's fully mechanical, uh, it's actually slower to compose your pictures. So if you're working with uh, subjects that are moving, if you're working with people a lot, if you're shooting portraits, a fully mechanical camera is going to be much, much slower to work for, uh, work with compared to electronic exposure camera like the Minolta X570, okay? So um, that's just a, a kind of a, a, a trade-off, a compromise that you have to work with when you work with a fully mechanical camera. Not only the OM-1, but any other fully mechanical camera that doesn't feature a automatic exposure modes, okay? So um, that's for the Olympus OM-1. Now we're gonna go on to the uh, Minolta X570. 
570. So um, again, this camera actually came out in the 80s. So in terms of the, um, the design, it's definitely a newer design compared to the Olympus OM-1. And uh, um, again, uh, the, let's go with the plus sides of uh, the X570 compared to the OM-1. The 570 is fully electronic. It's a fully electronic camera. Everything, the mirror, the shutter, um, is controlled by the battery, or the uh, a capacitor and the IC chip inside the camera. Uh, the only thing that's manual is the rewinding mechanism and the film advancing. So those you have to do manually, which I think is actually a joy um, to use if you picked up a vintage film camera, okay? So, um, and you can hear the sound. I can't, I can't really, sh you know, let you guys hear the sound on the OM-1 because I have films in there. That's my uh, personal go-to camera. Uh, the X570 is actually my backup camera um, if the OM-1 does more function, but it never more functions. So this X570 for me is mostly actually just sitting there and I'm actually considering selling the X570. Um, so again, first and foremost, it's fully electronic, very, very easy to use. And second, because it's electronic, this camera features a aperture priority mode. And uh, this is like the godsend and actually the mode that I use for my digital cameras as well. And uh, very easy to use because with aperture priority, all you need to worry about is your aperture speed. Okay, so, and it's actually an important speed for you to manually change because um, that determines, the aperture determines the, um, the background blurriness. Um, or for that, the depth of field effect. So if you do want, if you do have a fast prime lens and you want to experiment with a beautiful bokeh, beautiful blurred background, you want to use aperture priority and just let the camera, let Minota X570 takes care of setting the correct shutter speed for you. Now, that's why I think this camera in terms of um, the work, in terms of workflow, um, it's much, much easier, much, much quicker um, to work with. Uh, compared to the Olympus OM-1, uh, okay? So, um, <clears throat> definitely a huge plus uh, in terms of aperture priority auto exposure. Now, if you want to go full manual, um, this camera also features a full manual mode. And that brings us to another plus side of this camera, which is it actually displays the aperture speed and the shutter speed all in the viewfinder. The viewfinder is definitely more advanced compared to the, um, the OM-1. It actually had a full range of shutter speed displayed and also shows you the aperture speed and a LED indicator on where your aperture, where your shutter speed was set. Um, and of course, you can easily see your aperture with a little uh, light window over there. So uh, in terms of, again, workflow, much, much quicker to use uh, with the X570, okay? Um, another advance is a physical on and off button, okay? So you have a off button. Once you have the, but the camera turned off, you press the shutter speed, it's not gonna um, accidentally release the shutter. And if you turn it to on, you can release the shutter very easily. So that actually prevents accidental firing of the, of the film. Um, if you have the film loaded in the camera, very, very useful. And I think it's kind of essential nowadays for anything to have a off button, okay? Uh, so that's definitely a plus on the X570. Um, another advantage of the camera, since it came out newer in the 80s, uh, Minota actually used a silicone blue cell light meter. This light meter is actually more sensitive uh, and more accurate when it comes to giving a better exposed picture, okay? So, um, and uh, because of that, of course, this camera had the advantage of more accurate metering compared to the Olympus OM-1, which gives you a fairly okay metering, but it's slower to respond, and sometimes it might not be even accurate. Uh, but this camera, the X570, is always gonna give you a more accurate exposure, um, especially if you use color films, which, I think to me, the latitude is, is actually, um, uh, if you have a better exposure in the color film, it's gonna give you more latitude uh, post-processing uh, when you are trying to edit um, the color negative films or even for that matter, the color slides, okay? Um, so that's definitely one advantage of the X570 compared to the OM-1. Another 
um, advantage is um, this camera, because it's electronic, it's able to give you a extra mode that helps you with um, composing your subject. You guys hear that beep? So that beep is a warning for slow shutter speed. If you set your uh, aperture kind of uh, small and your shutter speed goes below, I think, 60th of a second, the camera beeps and uh, it warns you that the shutter speed is going to be slow. So if you're shooting people, um, it might be blurry. And that I think is a very helpful feature, especially if you're shooting a lot of the situations where there's going to be slightly low light at the dusk or, you know, at night um, when you're shooting subjects that are moving, uh, like, for example, people. So that's another advantage of the X570 compared to the, uh, the OM-1. OM-1 doesn't give you any info, so you've got to know by looking at the shutter speed if you're going too slow or not when you're composing a shot, okay? So those are the plus sides of the X570 compared to the OM-1. Now let's go to the downside of the X570 compared to the OM-1, okay? So first and foremost is this camera is fully electronic. You cannot use this camera without a battery. So if your battery is dead, the camera is not gonna function, not even in the bulb mode. Um, the bulb mode actually is battery dependent. So that's another downside. So with the bulb mode battery dependent, um, you can only use bulb mode for a maximum of two hours when you are having uh, when you're doing a long exposure so if you have the shutter i mean if you're doing one shot at two hours um the battery is going to run out after two hours you have to have putting a new battery in here um, to continue using the bulb mode and if your battery died you cannot use any other modes as well so make sure to have fresh batteries and a extra um and an extra spare battery with you when you're going out, um, you know, shooting, okay? This camera would not work without a battery. Uh, also, because of that reason, because it uses battery, and the battery usually don't work well in cold weathers, so um, your, um, in cold weather, the battery dies faster. So again, for that matter, always have a spare for this camera. And uh, uh, another downside compared to the OM-1 is that this camera does not have a mirror lockup. So if you're doing a lot of macro photography and that mirror is going to slap. And once it slaps, it might affect your picture quality, especially if you're doing very precision work. Um, the mirror slab, I mean, you can definitely feel it when you press the shutter. So that's, that's definitely something to consider. If you're doing macro photography, a, I think a mechanical camera with a mirror lockup is definitely gonna help you quite a lot, okay? Um, I'm sorry, I actually forgot to mention a, a plus side of this camera is that this camera actually had a, a, a building uh, auto exposure lock. So with that auto exposure lock, uh, it's much easier, again, working with moving subjects or working with people where you compose a subject that's actually off the frame because the camera only meters uh, with a center, metered, a center weighted metering. So you can compose with your subject in the center and press this auto exposure lock and then compose your picture with your subject on the side, uh, which makes, again, composing your subject much quicker Okay, with that auto exposure lock. Uh, now let's go back to um, the, the downside again. Um, I think the very last downside I'm going to mention is that this camera, even though it's an electronic camera designed you know, 10 years after the OM-1, they actually did not build a multiple expo a exposure function into this camera, which I think is actually will be very easy to achieve and uh, implement, but they, they don't have multiple exposure function for the X570, which is a pity uh, because that actually enables, you know, creative photography uh, for a lot of people with multiple exposures. Uh, so those are actually all the plus and the downside of the X570. Now, um, with both cameras, um, you'll be able to take excellent pictures, again, with both cameras, whether it's fully mechanical whether it's fully electronic. Um, I think it really comes down to your personal needs. Um, again, with those things that I mentioned earlier, the pros and the cons of each cameras, uh, you be the judge and you be the decision maker. And uh, if you guys have any questions about any of those particular cameras, 
do feel free to ask me in the comment section down below, um, and I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. And uh, I hope you found this video actually helpful in helping you making a decision on whether you should get a fully mechanical camera or whether you should get a electronic camera with auto uh, with aperture priority exposure. Okay, so thanks again for watching my video um, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.